Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 741. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 740 752, click on the link directly below the video. Hey, in this video here, uh, I'm actually going to shoot this full screen, so this video is intended for you to click the Maximize button. Hey, we have a data set here, and just like in our last video 40, we want to plot this on a chart, labels, and values. If I use Alt F1, that's the keyboard shortcut for the default chart on this sheet, you could see that, uh-oh, we have a problem. Some of the data where we have blanks or errors is plotting on the chart, and we don't want it. Last video, we saw how to deal with this with filter, which is easy to do. But if you have a dynamic data set, which means these values are going to be changing, then this method will work. It'll be fully dynamic. We can put an error here or a number here, and, and uh, our chart will update without having to refilter each time. All right. This is going to involve a lot of tricks. We're going to be doing some array formulas, some, some defined names with formulas, some charting tricks. I have lots of. Uh, notes down here and reference videos if you get lost here. All right. The first thing is we have to count how many values there are in this column that have numbers. That way we won't count the blanks or the errors. I'm going to use the count that counts numbers. Oh, that's straightforward. Hey, look, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now I'm going to come over here, and uh, I need to extract the records to a secondary location, right? Because I want this to be uh, dynamic. So I want to filter using a formula and only show the records with uh, a number here in this column. So I'm going to say equals if. Now, I need to turn this formula off. Right now, there's six. So when I want to copy down. When I get past the sixth row, I need to turn show a blank instead of the formula. So I'm going to say rows function. And I'm sitting in uh, I2. So I'm going to type I dollar sign 2 colon I2. This just is a number incrementer. So as we copy it down, this will give me the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And I'm going to compare this to any time the rows are greater than this. And I'm going to lock this with the F4 key. Anytime it's greater than that, the logical test, comma, anytime that's true, I want to show a blank. That way, when it gets down past row 6, it'll show a blank for all of these. Otherwise, the value of true, this is going to be our lookup function. And it's going to be uh, extract multiple items. So I'm going to say index. Now, the values we want to. Uh, extract array right there. We have product and quantity. So I'm first going to select the product column. And I better hit the F4 key once and twice. I want to lock the row, but not the column. When I go down, it needs to be locked on product. But when I copy it this way, it needs to move to quantity. So thus, the column reference is not locked. All right, that's our extract range. And then row number. Now, ultimately, we're going to need row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I'm sorry, 1, 2, 6, 7, 8, 11. So we need those row numbers. We have multiple row numbers. So we're going to have to use the small function to collect those row numbers together and then extract them one at a time as we copy down. Well, small will let us do that. We first need to create the uh, array of row numbers. Well, what's the true false trigger? Is this a number? Yes, true. Is this a number? True. Is this a number? False. So I'm going to use the is number. Now, normally the, oops, I need to say if. So I forgot the if. The logical test is going to be then, is this a number? Now, I need to extract a bunch of row numbers, so I'm going to have to highlight all of these. This will just give me a string of trues and falses. And by the way, I have to hit F4 there. And you can simply highlight this is number and hit F9 and see it gives me true, true, false, false. Exactly right, Control Z. Well, if that array of trues and falses gives me a true, what do I want? Well, I want the row number. So the value if true is going to be row. Now, right now, if I highlight this whole column and hit the F4, that would give me row 2, 3. And that's not what I want. I want 1, 2. So I'm going to have to subtract from it row. And I'm going to hit 
move that screen uh, tip there, F4. Well, right now that won't work because it'll give me 2 minus 2, so I simply add 1 back in. The reason why we do this construction is because it's perfectly dynamic. It is linked to this range. If I insert columns or move it, that range of rows will work fine. And you can highlight this and hit the F9, and sure enough, it gives me exactly what row numbers I want. But control Z. That's all of them. Well, what we really want for the small array is the if to trigger and only give me some of the row numbers. So I'm going to hit F9. There it is. 1, 2, 6, 7, 8, and 11, just as we uh, originally hypothesized. Control Z to undo that. Well, I need to extract. That's the array, right? And the small function is great because you can extract the first uh, first smallest, second smallest, third smallest row. So I'm simply going to use the same little number incrementer I have here. And then close parentheses. You could see right now if I highlight small, that'll give me the first one, which is row 1. So F9, you can see it gives me a row. As I copy down, it'll give me then uh, 2, 6, etc. Control Z. All right, and now that's the row number. Control I mean, close parentheses, value with false, control, just all the parentheses until you see the black one. Now, this is an array formula. Right here in the if, we gave it more than one logical test, so we have to use the special keyboard shortcut, control, shift, enter, to enter this array formula. Control, shift, enter. That is the signal from us to Excel saying this is an array formula. That curly bracket right there is Excel saying I understand this as an array formula. I'm going to copy this over and down. Now we can test this if I come over and put a number here. So it should then give me this product 3, and sure enough, it does, control Z. Now we want to do this for the chart. Now let's just try this right now, because we can see our, our formula part of this is, is uh, complete. If I highlight this and Alt F1, ooh, it doesn't like all those blanks in there, because these formulas are delivering a blank right there. And it's seeing those and going, I don't know what to do with a bunch of blanks. So now, we need to build a dynamic range. And we're going to use the define name feature. Now let's just go ahead and see if we can build a formula that will dynamically select a different range depending on what's in this column. So right now, we would like this range, for example. But if we change this to 3, we want this range right here, i2 to uh, i8. No problem. I'm going to Control Z and get rid of that. No problem. We're going to use not the offset function, but the index function. The index function. Now first, I can just say, hey, give me that uh, reference right there. And I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it. And no, notice we. We either want it down to I7 or I8 in our last two examples. So we would type a colon. Oh, and I don't know how to do that. There's a colon, but I want this to be F4. When I hit colon, it automatically changes that. But you want that to start out your formula. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the index function to look up the, uh, in essence, the last value here, index. But it's not going to look up the last value. Index usually returns product 2 if we say, give me the last one here. But we're not going to do that. We're, the index, because it's sitting next to a colon, and this is supposed to be a range of cells, it'll return not the product 2, but the actual cell reference, i7. So now my array is going to be this whole column here, f4, comma. And what's the row number? Well. We already have the row number because there's a 6. So I'm simply going to click there and F4. Close parentheses. Now, lo and behold, if we highlight just this part and hit F9, notice it returns product 2 because it's programmed to, to look something up and return it, Control Z. But if you highlight the whole thing with that colon, immediately index function is in a different context. It's in the context of being a range. And so F9, it's not going to show us here in formula mode using the F9 key. But you can see it delivered all of them perfectly. In formula evaluator, you can see that it actually evaluates to an arrange, arrange, control Z. Now I'm going to copy this whole thing because we don't want it in the cell. We want to put it in a defined name. Now I'm going to hit Enter and leave that there. Just in case I have trouble, I can come back and uh, copy that. Now there's a keyboard shortcut, and I have some of the keyboard shortcuts listed here. Control F3 opens up define names. Now, unfortunately, I left the names in here from before. 
I'm going to click on this one and then hold control, making sure I'm not deleting the wrong ones, and then I'm going to hit delete. And I'm going to close this. I'm actually, yeah, no, I'm not going to close that. Control F3. All right, so those ones are for the answer sheet. Now I want to create a new one, and I'm simply going to call it PRO for product. And I'm going to come down here to refers to, delete, and control V because I copied it from right there. I'm going to click OK and I'm immediately going to check it over here. Notice it put in the uh, sheet references there, but I'm immediately going to click this button boop, and check. And sure enough, it looks like it's working just fine. Uncollapse. N not close. I'm actually going to create this formula all again, a, sec a second one for the quantity column. I'm going to click there, colon. It puts that J2 in, so I'm going to backspace and then hit the F4 key right there. Index, highlight the whole column. F4, comma, this one right here, F4, close parentheses, and there it is. Beautiful index to either retrieve a value or a cell reference, depending on the context. I'm going to hit Enter to keep it there. Control F3. Pro, new, and now this one's going to be quantity. Come down here, delete, Control V, OK. I'm going to check it, and sure enough, Wow. So, so far we've done some dy dynamic formulas. We um, created these defined names. Now we're going to build our chart. And I'm going to highlight just this data to start the chart and control F1. You reduce the size down a little bit. Click that and delete that. You can do whatever you want to the, uh, you know, the formatting of the chart and labels and stuff. Now, the trick is this. There's one last trick. We've done two things. The last little tricky part is you have to enter these names in a certain method. Quantity, edit, and if you're in earlier versions, you do step two of Chart Wizard. Um, series values. Now, watch this very carefully. You have to leave the sheet name there and highlight just the cell references and delete just Oh, I'm doing quantity, right? So that you can see over here it's highlighted. But delete, leave the sheet reference. And now I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut F, um, F3. That's paste name. Or if you know how to type it, you just type it. Paste name because sometimes you have a lot and you forget. Now watch this. It's got the sheet name and the define name. I click OK. Now let's go over and try it here. Edit. Same trick. you got to highlight just the cell references, delete it, hit F3, paste this one's product. Those are the labels. Click OK. Now, I want to notice something. Remember, we had a sheet name and a defined name there. When I click Edit, there's a workbook reference, and that is what will uh, be put in when you click OK. So even though we put a sheet reference and a defined name, it puts a workbook reference in there with uh, the, the uh, name of the defined name. All right, now that should do it. Click OK, OK, click OK. And our chart should update if I put a product right here. So three, it immediately should give me product three in the chart right there and have a new value in the table. Enter, it's there, that updates, uh, that updates. It's all looking good. Wow, that was a wild one. We. Uh, we counted some numbers. We did an array formula. We did a define name for dynamic ranges using index. And finally, we inserted our names into the chart so that everything was update. Let's put a 2 right here. And sure enough, it's all. And it goes the reverse, too, if you um, uh, delete a bunch, right? It'll show just 1, 2, 3, and 4 values. One final note, if we scroll over here, there is an um, Another option, if you have Excel 2010, you can use the aggregate function in place of the small, and it doesn't require Control-Shift-Enter. So if you download this workbook, you can check, uh, check that out. If I hit Enter here, you can see there's no curly brackets. All right, uh, we'll see you next video.